might hope that they will go further than October 29th. They will not. We are open to good ideas when it comes to supporting Canadians and, of course, supporting Canadian seniors. And so those, um, you know, we look forward to discussing and debating those ideas. The Liberals still aren't ready to meet the Bloc Québécois' demand on old age security. Put simply, this Liberal government boosted OAS for seniors ages 75 and older by 10 percent. The Bloc wants that boost extended to all seniors 65 and over. And ask the parliamentary budget officer has pegged at about $3 billion a year. The Liberals have been hesitant to meet the demand, citing concerns over cost and generational fairness. So can they afford not to appease the Bloc? Let's bring in our front bench to talk about that. Former B.C. Premier Christy Clark is here. She's a senior advisor with Bennett Jones. Former Alberta MLA and Cabinet Minister Gary Marr is with us. He's the president and CEO of the Canada West Foundation. And former Manitoba Premier and Canadian Ambassador to the U.S. Gary Dewar is with us. He's now a senior business advisor at Denton's. Hi, everybody. Very nice to Hi. see you on this Thursday. Uh, Gary Marr, i got to figure out some way to distinguish between, <laughs> between the two Garys, but without saying your full name's going forward. But I'll start with Gary Marr. Do you think the Liberals... Um, I mean, they, we had Mr. Gould on yesterday... She's, she said that it would set a bad precedent, essentially, to, to vote for this motion because of the involvement of royal recommendation and a private member's bill. But she did not say no unequivocally to the idea of boosting OAS. Do you think, if you were a betting man, they're going to do something like that? Or uh, would that be unwise politically? Well, we've just had uh, John Manley and uh, David Dodge on <laughs> saying that this is a colossally bad idea, and, and I'd have to agree with them. Uh, and what's interesting to me is that, you know, the Conservatives voted, uh, you know, uh, with the Bloc, and, uh, but I don't think, uh, as John Manley says, uh, that we're uh, going to find that uh, should Pierre Poilievre become the prime minister, that they're going to move forward on this policy. It, I, I think the real issue is that their strategy is to bring forward an election, however which way they do it. So will the Liberals do this? Um, you know, I I don't think so. Uh, but you never know. Uh, they've got, you know, in the House, there's a couple of vacancies. And so you really need... I think by my count, 168 votes to carry the day. And so uh, the Liberals have, again, you know, 154 seats and then a couple that they can rely upon. Uh, so they need just another 12 people to vote with them uh, in order to fend back this, uh, uh, fend back this. And I could see the Liberals being able to um, win the vote on this by, you know, uh, providing um, things that, individual MPs want uh, in, in order to get 12 more votes uh, in order to in order to hold the house so uh, I, I don't I don't think the Liberals will do it but um, at this point this is just a procedural th um, issue this is not you know a binding motion or vote in any way shape or form um, I think that the conservatives uh, moved it forward just so that they could uh, continue the debate and keep the heat on um, the Liberals in the Bloc. This is where the issue really is, not with the Conservatives. Yeah, I think just two quick caveats. I, I, I certainly understand that from a strategic point of view, but the idea of the Conservatives voting for an additional $3 billion of spending at the expense of younger generations when they've essentially spent the past two years saying that shouldn't happen is something that they will have to you know, answer for at some point. Um, the other caveat I would add, uh, Christy, is that I think, you know, from my conversations over the last 24 hours, the people around the prime minister are very rattled by the situation right now. I think that they believe the bloc will do everything as they have said in their ultimatum to bring them down. And they're unsure of the NDP, not of the leader, Jagmeet Singh, but of the pressure caucus might apply to him to end up, you know, withdrawing support because they haven't even said what they'd want in exchange for that support. What is your sense of where things could go? Well, I think, I mean, Gary Marr's um, analysis of the numbers is interesting and I think, you know, very useful to think about. It's it's 12 members they're talking about. It, it's a whole lot cheaper to build a road <laughs> in someone's riding than it is to spend an extra, you know, many billions of dollars on the, on, on the OAS improvements that, um, that the block is talking about. So I think they're probably going to find a way to make this work, but I do, you know, if there's, if there's a sense in the prime minister's office of worry that you're detecting, I think that's 
very legitimate because what they're looking at is they're saying, well, this isn't going to be the last of these tricks that these guys are going to pull out of their pockets. And they're in for a long period of really just trying to stick, get their fingernails in and, and hang around until they're ready for an election, which I, I, I guess they're, they're obviously not uh, because they're not, they're not forcing one. The liberals aren't looking forward to one at the moment. So I think they'll probably find a way to survive this. I think they're nervous about what's coming next. But I do think, though, you know, as, as, you, as you said a, a little bit there, Vashi, there is this whole thing just reeks of utter cynicism on the part of the conservatives and the bloc. I mean, less so as the NDP haven't really been playing as much. But boy, for the bloc to have introduced this, when, as you say, there is a generation of people who are really hurting in the country, and there are some group of seniors who are really hurting, but overall, seniors are doing better than, than most other generations. And then for the Conservatives to say that they would likely support it, when after they've spent years talking about how they want generational uh, fairness, is really, it just, I, I don't think anybody comes out of this looking good. And if there may be some people in the prime minister's office who are saying, well, you know what, it hasn't really worked for us, but boy, this isn't going to work for Polyev either. The, the only thing I would say, and Gary Dewar, I'll throw it over to you. I have been, I host like a talk radio show during the day, and I've said this on the program earlier this week. I've been inundated this week with calls from people who support this idea and who feel that actually they could benefit from it. And I was surprised kind of at the, the scope of the response. So that might also be informing some of the positions other parties have taken. Christy mentioned, Gary, that the NDP has really not been, and I think this is a great point, that the bloc has laid out all their cards. The NDP has not laid out any. And, and ultimately, if the bloc does side against the government going forward on confidence motions, it will be up to the NDP to decide whether or not the Liberals stay in power unless there's a prorogation. Um, it, it, what is your sense of what the what what the NDP might offer or might want rather in exchange for their support? Well, certainly, I, I agree with uh, John Manley and David Dodge and Gary and Christy about how this policy. <laughs> Nobody. Uh, <wants> but uh, <laughs> good policy and bad policy isn't necessarily good politics. The block uh, resolution is very good politics. It puts a lot of pressure on all parties. I can see why the Liberals are rattled, uh, not only uh, because it's very difficult to vote against seniors uh, and their financial uh, situation, but seniors vote. They're the most reliable body to vote. So I can see why, Vassie, you're picking up uh, the Liberals are very rattled inside the uh, PMO. Uh, I uh, Nobody wants to vote against seniors, and uh, there's another kind of uh, tricky uh, resolution being proposed by the bloc, which of course wants to separate from Canada, down the road with supply management. And that is also going to turn a lot of MPs into pretzels trying to figure out what to do on that. Do you raise the price of milk for local consumers to protect the uh, quota for, for, for some farmers, particularly how popular it is in rural Quebec? So this is just the beginning uh, of this uh, uh, dance between politics and uh, policy. And unfortunately, in this case, it's very bad policy, uh, but very, very good politics. And it's very difficult to see how the NDP can vote against seniors without getting something really, really uh, important for them uh, in the short term. I don't know how, I don't know what it is, but it's yeah, not that easy. <laughs> Me either. Yeah, love to know what it is. Uh, we'll save yeah. the discussion for prorogation uh, till probably next week when it will still be on the table. I'm going to take a quick break. We're going to turn to the U.S. election with Gary Dewar, Gary Marr, and Christy Clark next.